All right, uh, quick circuit for the day. Uh, we're going to be talking about a, uh, a, a Wienbridge oscillator. Um, I learned it as, as <laughs> called it a Weinbridge oscillator, but it's actually German. It should be Wienbridge oscillator. Um, and a Wienbridge is something that looks more like this. Uh, it's a bridge, and there is... Uh, uh, this up at there and this down to here and if if you ever look at an LCR meter inside it has a bridge in it you'll see things like this um, but anyway uh, there's a bunch of theory behind them and uh, why it operates and why it's stable and stuff and why you might put a light bulb in it that's a different story <laughs> um, but I was just curious if you just built a crude um, uh, bridge oscillator um, what is the what is the distortion that you get out of it? Just just simplistically, you can build very very fancy ones that have super low distortion. Um, the reason I, I was kind of interested in this because one of the um, TM five hundred Tectonics plugins is a plugin that has extremely low uh, distortion, and uh, it has a bunch of current sources and stuff, and that makes it real fancy and leveling circuits and stuff. But I was just kind of curious if you just built a simple one like this, um, how good is it? I mean, I, I really didn't know, and I have a way of measuring it, so I figured, well, why not put one together? So, so here it is. Um, uh, you know, here are the two sections of one side and the two to the other side of the bridge, and I'm just going to use my favorite components, 0.01 and 10Ks. Now, in order to make this thing work, this, this gain stage here, this, this um, resistor that adds gain on this side, is very critical. It's very touchy about what this value is. And um, it makes the thing a little bit hard to build. So if, if you build one of these yourself, put a, um, a, a 10K pot here and adjust it until this thing works nice and then go measure your pot and see what, what value you ended up with. And mine happened to be around 5.1K. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of a, a, t a tip there. So um, uh, I think you can make it better by having better components and stuff. Um, uh, like I said, there is a a bunch of circuits you'll see where they where they actually put a uh, a light bulb uh, a light bulb in this uh, in this part of the bridge, and that helps stabilize the intensity of the oscillation. Um, there are other ways that people put a uh, actually put like a JFET transistor here that acts as a resistor, and then there's a feedback path where they pick off the output. They take it into an RMS, uh, RMS uh, root mean squared converter. They measure the intensity and then they feed that back around to the uh, uh, to the SVET to do uh, true balancing to make it really, really accurate. If you want to build one of these with a really, really accurate RMS value output, you can put you can build circuits that have this this feedback path in it. Um, but I just want to make a really, really simple one and just to see how good it is. All right. All right, so here's my little circuit. Uh, it's all on a breadboard, so it can't be very good. Um, and I, like I said, I'm just using 10Ks and 0.01s. And it oscillates. Amazing. <laughs> and like I said, that one value, that, that 5.1K, if I just put my finger on it, you can see that I can, I can change the... Um, I can change the gain. By putting my finger on it, what I'm doing is I'm effectively lowering that resistance. And by lowering that resistance, I'm increasing the gain of the stage. And so, the, so it goes up. So you can see why putting a, uh, a light bulb in there to stabilize things or to, to have a feedback a feedback path to modulate the resistance of this and keep, keep the uh, uh, intensity stable uh, why that might be important, but uh, yeah, anyway, um, how good is it? Yeah, not bad, 0.02%, 0.02% total harmonic distortion, and um, yeah, I was pretty impressed with that, uh, just for a simple, simple, simple little circuit, just one, one op amp and a couple components, and I'm about 1.6K uh, K hertz, um, so if you want to change the um, frequency of this thing, let me show you the formula. <clears throat> I 
Everybody loves math. Uh, so the formula is 1 over uh, 2 pi r c and uh, is there a square root there? No, it's just 1 over 2 pi r c. Uh, so let's do the math. Our r is 10k. Our c is 0 0.01 micro. And uh, where's our calculator? <coughs> Sorry. Okay. Uh, 10k, 0 0.01 micro, 2 and pi, and 1 over that is 1.592 times 10 to the third. And what are we getting? 1.6 times 10 to the third. Anyway, so yeah, so the calculation works right. And so uh, the R's and the C's are, these two R's are the same and these two C's are the same. So when you use this formula, whatever R, it, these two R's have to be the same, like I said. So that equals the R. So I, maybe just put it in here. This is R, this is R, and this is C, and this is C, and the two C's have to be the same. So these, these match in the... Uh, uh, in the bridge configuration, you have you have matching things, and then it makes it easy to calculate the uh, calculate the oscillation frequency. Uh, it does make it hard to make uh, something variable though, because you have to vary things at the same time. So you have to have ganged a ganged capacitor or a ganged uh, resistor in order to in order to make this work, because uh, you have to change them change them at the same time. But yeah, pretty impressed. Uh, very nice clean sine wave and uh, very good total harmonic distortion. A lot of times, um, I know I, I, uh, at least several occasions, people have asked me about, oh, I want to build a, a really good sine wave oscillator. And I've always said, yeah, just just, just build the uh, Veenbridge oscillator. And uh, But I've never really shown it on camera. So uh, yeah, there you go. Look it up.